Thanks to my early copy from the developers, I've managed to sink 100 hours in the Soul Hackers 2. Caught all the demons, tapped Ringo's ass, and got the platinum. In this video, I'll be giving as much knowledge as I can as an experienced Soul Hacker to those players who may just be starting out, and to those who may have overlooked some of the game's mechanics. I'll be reiterating a lot of helpful tips that I've given to players in the Discord, tips that I know have made a difference to their experience. To start off with, let's briefly go over the new system with demon stacking and mystiques, some of the essential components of making a build in Soul Hackers 2. If you're wondering how some people manage to get 10 plus demons in the Sabbath, there are many ways to increase the stack count for demons as well as the potency of the attack itself which includes upgrading Ringo's comp, especially her commander skills such as stack optimization and stack condenser, learning the skill on your demon, which can give you plus one stack for a party member during a turn, and most importantly, completing the soul matrix to unlock gates and the summoner skills, which net you various plus one demons joining the stack upon striking weaknesses with different affinities, getting crits, ambushing, and more. It's absolutely worth knowing this as early as possible because utilizing this mechanic can give you a big boost in tougher battles, not outright trivialize some of the boss encounters themselves. As for mystiques, I'll mention that the best way to go about unlocking these is by continuing to upgrade your demons even beyond the threshold for learning skills. You'll get some surprise upgrades from them even a few levels past when they learn their final native skill. And when continuing on New Game Plus, you seem to get some even more potent mystiques just from leveling up the starter demons. You can always trade in mystiques for better ones to the vendor outside of the demon circus area if you're not into grinding. And you must upgrade each party member's comps in order to achieve the proper affinity to equip the most powerful mystiques. Each character unlocks two S rank affinities apiece, as follows. In addition to unlocking the strongest divinities, you can expand the mystique slots to up to three for each character, which expands the possibilities for how you can compose your party to take advantage of the two innate affinities that are semi-exclusive to each character. Combine this with Master Conversion, allowing you to switch out your entire demon selection on a single party turn, and you can quickly turn the tide of battle in your favor by stacking up hits on the foe's collective weaknesses. If you're in need of grinding XP to fuse in-game demons, or perhaps you just want to gain access to some of the most powerful skills early on, you can farm risky enemies. The best way to go about this is by using consumables such as Marinara of Adversity or Varja Sara Udon, buying the skill Vigilance 3 for Arrow's Comp, which significantly reduces the chance of ambush, so that you can safely approach these risky enemies to start winning each battle at a time by forming the right stock to take advantage of weaknesses. Keep in mind that risky enemies change every 10 levels that you go up, and they will be 15 levels higher than you max when you go up every 10 levels. But defeating them will net you double XP to all party members as well as a boatload of cash. Going back to the topic of summoner skills, make sure to explore the soul matrix in depth in between your main story missions, as you'll gain new details about the game's lore, unlock new passages which lead to new items and demons for recruitment, and most importantly, unlock the summoner skills which give you an edge in battle and in traversing the dungeons. You can gain access to a very important skill called Sprint, which a lot of people don't know is in the game, very early on by doing Melody's Matrix. I can't stress enough that you should be doing the side content as much as possible. Although the soul matrix cannot be completed in your first playthrough due to insufficient soul rank, you will find plenty of upgrades to amplify the experience. Likewise, doing side quests will unlock many bosses which will grant you XP, items, and new fusions. As for fusions, there are 147 demons in Soul Hackers 2 that you can fuse or obtain through negotiation as well as 10,000 possible fusions for those demons. Essential here is Mitama Fusion or Frost Fusion, which allows you to store traits onto these weaker demons as conduits and fusing into stronger demons to train their weaknesses and or inherit more powerful skills 
down into weaker demons for giggles. Any demons missing from Special Fusion are unlocked from requests, directives, and completing the Soul Matrix. I would recommend learning all possible unique skills with the demon before fusing them, and consider keeping as many demons with Sabbath tandems as possible in the party for a chance to activate Sabbaths in battle. Having weaker demons tag along with you is also fine if you want to continue ranking them up to unlock their mystique bonuses. Otherwise, keeping as few demons in the stock as possible seems to mathematically increase the chance of Sabbath demons joining the stack. The comp system has over 200 upgrades that give you more combat variety and increase the potency of your attacks. Some helpful unlocks include the Melody Mercy Kill, which can eliminate any enemy outside of a main boss's final form, saving you a party turn or two. Ringo's passive that cuts through an enemy's physical resistances. Sizel's nullification of gun or physical attacks that could wipe out the party and Arrow's passive that grants health regen during blocks, and a few more. In acquiring these upgrades, you will need materials that demons reward you with after slaying them. These can be found at random through Demon Recon, for completing ion directives, and farmed from the specific demons, as hinted at from the item description shown in the comp menu. The rarest of such items is the Bespoke Chip, used to unlock S-Rank Affinity. There is supposedly a limited number per playthrough, and there seem to be some guaranteed drops during the fifth floor of the Soul Matrix. You can increase the frequency of rare items from Saizo's comp, which will give you an edge in farming such items. These are just some of the basics that I wanted to go over that a lot of people might not know their first couple hours into the game. Within each of these categories, there are a lot of upgrades and a lot of skills that you can learn. And so just taking your time and exploring the Soul Matrix and doing the side content is pretty much the bulk of what I have to say here. There's not a whole lot of extra stuff you can do in Soul Hackers 2, but the main offering is the combat and you'll want to have as many possible enhancements to that as you can. But I hope that some of these tips were things you didn't know, and I hope they help your combat experience go a little smoother. Greetings, President.